During the nearly five months of the full-scale invasion, dozens of regional officials from the Russian Federation managed to visit the front or nearby areas. Such trips are strongly encouraged in the Kremlin. Today, in order to be in the good graces, in order to please Putin, in order to survive in conditions where you can be fired for any sleep, for any mistake, you must do something that Putin likes, so that he and the administration notice you. And since Putin now has only one goal, to achieve at least some victories on the territory of Ukraine, then obviously any governor who comes to the occupied territories is immediately noticed by the president, the presidential administration and the security forces. The heads of the Altai Krai, Samara, Rostov, Volgograd, Voronezh regions, Bashkiria, the mayors of Moscow and St. Petersburg, chairman of the State Duma of the Russian Federation, Vyacheslav Volodin, and other officials paid their visits. They often back up their propaganda speeches with promises of financial aid. For example, the authorities of St. Petersburg promised assistance in the restoration of Mariupol, destroyed by the Russian occupation forces. All this looks ridiculous and absolutely insane, especially in the context of the socio-economic situation in the Russian regions, whose governors come to the temporarily occupied territories of Ukraine in order to provide so-called support. In this regard, there is a lot of irony and sarcasm even in Russian information space and social media, that before rebuilding Mariupol, it would probably be worth rebuilding Yurga, Tomsk or Omsk or both. In addition to PR, experts link such activity to preparations for holding pseudo-referendums. However, the Kremlin has not yet decided which question should be put to the so-called vote. I get the feeling that the Kremlin still does not fully understand what they want to do. Because if you annex the occupied territories, but at the same time remain in a state of war, then it turns out that the whole country is in a state of war. This may begin to destabilize the situation inside Russia. Moreover, the occupied territories will need to be restored. I have read various estimates that 80% of the destruction falls on these occupied territories. Putin will have to spend money, a lot of money. This is about 100 billion US dollars. This is a huge amount of money that is needed to restore these territories. So here Putin faces a dilemma. The preparation of the armed forces of Ukraine for a counteroffensive also jeopardizes the holding of a pseudo-referendum. However, even if the so-called vote takes place, its results will not have weight in the international legal field, experts remind. The only legal consequence is that such referendums will have a criminal liability for their organizers and accomplices. That's it, there will be no other political or legal consequences of holding these referendums. I'll just emphasize again that we use this word, a referendum, as if it there would be some kind of expression of the will of the people. No, they are not preparing for anything like that. At best, they are preparing to simply draw some data on some pieces of paper, as they did in Crimea, as they once did in Donetsk and Luhansk. Ukraine's international partners have repeatedly stated that they will not recognize the results of any so-called referendums, and their holding will only lead to increased sanctions pressure on Russia. Reported by Marina Stepanenko, Larissa Zubenko, UATV News.